Ow. On today's episode, I am playing Cactus Cornhole. I have to use these tongs so that I don't stab myself. The only kind of gloves that you can wear and pick up prickly pear pads without getting stabbed all the time are so thick that you lose all the dexterity. What I'm going to show you is the process of me hacking through all these prickly pear and the reason I'm doing it. One of the key ideas now that I'm going to start harvesting cactus and transplanting it into the dirt bathtubs is to get as much of it as possible onto this trailer. Uh, this trailer is going to stay out here uh, for the next month under the LME once we get that fixed yet tomorrow. But in the meantime, while I have some time to actually work, I'm going to get all this deck cleared off and then uh, get it on the trailer and start uh, cutting cactus. These are thornless cactus that Texas Cactus on Instagram donated to me. And I was able to meet up with him in Austin so that I have a few, plenty of pads to try. This will go over here. I got to work a little early, but I didn't have this with me. So I got to throw the pads from, or from the truck onto the trailer. And then I could actually get started. Never thrown anything with tongs before. It was an interesting experience. That's it. To minimize trips with a trailer, I have this little wagon and this bucket so that instead of throwing all those pads one by one, which is a waste of time, you just dump the bucket and move on. So I do have to walk this one to the first patch, which is just right here and there, but uh, time to get started. I don't know if you heard that thunder in the background, but uh, I may not have uh, more than an hour before I got to stop or work in the rain, which I might just work in the rain. I don't know about carrying a big blade in a thunderstorm though. Probably going to stop. As you can tell, I am not well practiced. And then we'll leave the rest so that it can grow back. I realized this little lock I left on the trailer, I was having trouble with my keychain and getting things off and I took that key off and didn't put it back on my keychain. Uh, I've got bolt cutters, but they're in the tent that collapsed. So I'm just gonna worry about this tomorrow. For now, there's enough cactus around camp. I'm just gonna walk a little bit more than I need to. This really is the way it goes out here. Just one little thing that sets you back so bad. It's pretty heavy. One. With only about a hundred more to go. Maybe 200. <laughs> is that right? Uh, I think it's about 10 for a thousand. So I probably need a hundred. So far I have one and a half. Two. And I realized what I need to do to keep count is just count one bucket and then I'll count my buckets. The bug got stabbed. Ah, oh, he stopped moving. He was squirming a second ago. There he goes. Yeah, he's he's alive. For now. I'll let him go. Yesterday, I finally found the keys to unlock the pen that I wasn't able to find. 
I made the mistake of changing up my system where I keep all the trailer components, but uh, got lucky that I was cleaning out and organizing because I came across the key I needed. So now today I'm going to hook up the trailer, drive down the road, and then this is going to minimize the trips back and forth. I can have the trailer with me and use the buckets to dump cactus directly on the trailer, go park it right next to the work site, and wrap this up. Do you like my hook shot? Ow. I'm really excited to make sure that I harvest these guys. When I harvested tunas in June, these had really, really big ones, like this size. And that's the only reason that I was able to harvest them and bring them home and turn them into a smoothie for my kids, which got them so motivated. Uh, so they're really excited. They want their smoothie next June, which probably won't happen, but maybe in two years. The reason for cutting these pads and loading them on the trailer, well, obviously they need to get on the trailer to get where I want to plant them, but we want to also let them dry and specifically callus. So you can see this big hack mark where I sawed this at the bottom. And with even with just one or two days of healing, this is already calloused over. You can see this one, which is a little more fresh, where the cactus has already started to repair itself. And by the time I come back, it'll look more like this sometime in October when I'm ready to plant it. The advantage to letting it dry is that it is less likely to rot. So if I'm going to go to all this effort hacking prickly pear all across my property, I want to give it the best chance it can possibly get to work. One criticism I expect to hear are the fact that I didn't cut perfectly. So you can see I didn't cut at the base of this and I left this little part which might get stuck and break off into an even smaller piece like this. Isn't that bad? Well, it's kind of cost benefit analysis. So something as small as this, it's possible that this might be able to grow and generate a new plant. I've just kind of learned from doing this for a week that the amount of effort that it takes for me to get my machete and come here and saw at the base and then pick it up and throw it over there into the tub. It's that went really quickly because that was a nice angle, but some of these are really hard to get to where it's not worth like this. So this one right here, like I'd have to come in here and then come in this way. And even then I'm not gonna get a really good angle on it. And so I only got half the pad. Is that really worth the payoff? Honestly, not really. So it's better to just come in here and karate chop as best you can trying to cut at the base and trying to cut pads as cleanly and neatly as you can. But you also wanna go quick because I need to plant a whole acre of this and it requires a lot of cacti to pull that off. And so if I can get away with pieces as little as this working, well then that's better because I don't have to spend so much time delicately cutting the pads. And then some of these pieces are very unlikely to work or I'm not feeling too confident about it where I don't know that I necessarily wanna transplant something this small. So what I've been doing is looking around for nearby vegetation where instead of just leaving this on the ground, I can go put it behind some grama grass on the north side of it right here. Make sure that it's got some nice contact with the ground and that's it. So if I, if that actually does work, well then I'll have a new stand of cactus for very little effort. Daniel was telling me a story about his buddy Phil in the north part of the county. Phil wants to get rid of the cacti because he's trying to monocrop. And to clear the cacti, he ran his brush hog through it. And by the next year, it made a giant mess. The cacti had multiplied many times over because all those little small chunks coming off the brush hog established new stands of cacti. I would love that. It might even be worth it. I don't think I can get a brush hog around here and do anything, but there's some merit to just throwing cacti parts everywhere and watching stuff grow. I'm not the guy that came up with the cacti idea. That came from Tiago Jimenez. He is very prominent with centropic agriculture and I think that approach is absolutely the best way to go out here because the idea of hauling in wood chips or any other organic matter is completely infeasible when you have to drive six hours round trip to go get it. The fuel bill would be astronomical. Uh, there's not any water here to irrigate. 
Uh, and even if I dug a well, it's not going to yield anything substantial for me to irrigate with. So we have to grow our own biomass. And I think the centropic approach is the best way to do it. Cacti really are living cisterns. They're 85% water and they grow here. Just over here, Brandon and I abused that stand of prickly pear. I think that's New Mexico prickly pear with mini excavator and yet it's still hanging on. So when you can literally drive over it with heavy equipment and it survives, uh, that's probably what you should be doing, especially when it holds water. And the prickly pear is what's gonna enable us to move on to stage two and three, which Tiago and his team are outlining for me. And I can't wait to get started. All right, this is the last one. And I'm gonna leave it. I left this one in the case because we're just going to have to load them back in a case whenever it's time to transplant. So I think that's a wrap. I got to tally the numbers and then I'll guesstimate how many pads are laying on the trailer. Daniel and I figured out that there are around 150 pads per full bucket. I filled that up roughly 23 times and with roughly 150 pads. It's about 3,500 cactus pads that have been cut and stacked and loaded on the trailer. I'm now going to take the trailer up near the dirt bathtubs, park it for a month, and I'm going to show you something pretty cool that I think is relevant for a lot of you that have ranches or RVs or a couple other unexpected applications. Good boy, buddy. Way to stay out of the way. Uh, basically, this is a giant tarp, but what's smart about it is it's really a used billboard. I've been talking to Mr. Tarp Guy. I purchased a full-size billboard. This one is 14 by 48, which is overkill for this purpose, but I'd rather have too much tarp than too little. And although this side has an ambulance chaser, What's nice is if you want to not look at some attorney, you can use the, the black side. Yeah, you keep watch. Okay. Ace, come! If you don't want to look at the attorney's face on this side, it's fine. You just turn it upside down and you have this nice black part. I've changed the rollout so that I'll have the 14 feet going this way. I'm just going to slowly roll it over the cacti so that I minimize the amount of penetration by the thorns. And then I'm going to use that big height gate to keep the tarp somewhat elevated and off the cacti. What I'm hoping is that whatever heat is getting collected on the tarp, that the wind can blow under it. I'll be using chains like this to uh, put weight on the tarp and make sure it stays in place. Which is nice because I have the D-rings on the trailer. So that's... Uh, it really ought to be secure. And I already know that'll work because I use this tarp all the time to protect my trailer in the first place and make sure that my spare tires don't dry rot in the heat. And one thing I'm glad I did was I started by loading all the cactus in the front of the trailer because I just had the thought that what if I didn't load the weight correctly and put it all on the tongue? But thankfully that is what I did. So now, And uh, you can also see the water because it just rained. And these things are waterproof. So whenever I decide that I want to make a big rain catchment, I've got all of this hilly terrain. I can put one of these on the side, one of these hills. And because this is waterproof, I can have several hundred square feet of catchment area. I mean, like, that's a lot of water. That is a lot, lot, lot of water less than a hundred dollars for the tarp you have a couple of filters and as long as you put it in the right spot it's a really really cheap way to catch water i'd like to thank mr tarp guy for sponsoring this episode in addition to using this for covering cactus you can use this as an rv cover an rv skirting a hay cover and you can use it as a weed barrier a boat cover an animal shelter a wagon cover check out the link in the description
and there you go. You can see the winds blowing under, which is gonna help keep cacti nice and dry. The other advantage to doing it this way on the trailer is that of course it's got a decking. It's not a sealed floor. So air is coming from the bottom, air is blowing across the top. It's gonna do a good job of drying this cacti out for about five weeks until I come back. And then next month, I'm gonna have a very large group of volunteers out here. I'm expecting 10, 15 plus, And we're gonna just load bins one at a time. And then I've been a little disappointed with the bathtubs. Like we do have some that are doing better than others. Um, like I've got a little bit of vetiver that's alive here, but it's hanging on. But then you yeah, have these occasional sorghum that are just thriving. So I've learned some lessons. I need to uh, plant more densely if I'm gonna do this again. But uh, that's the whole point of this journey. Do it, learn, improve, do it again, but avoid repeating the same mistakes. It's been a month since Diane helped me plant this mini forest and I am absolutely thrilled with what I'm seeing here. The plants look even greener than when we planted them. So far, we've only had one loss and everything else looks like it's doing great. Um, actually, some of these look like they've died back just a tad, but other than that, this is by far better than I was expecting. So I'm cautiously optimistic. We'll see how they do through the next couple of months. I've spent this trip watering them about every other day, just trying to help them along and uh, we'll see how they do through the winter. We have another couple weeks of temperatures around 95 degrees. It gets pretty cold up here. We're zone eight. One minor change I do want to make is the sun, now that it's much less intense uh, as we're getting into the fall, I'm going to switch the sun fabric from that really heavy cloth to 50% sunshade or 50% sun cloth. I think that's what it's called. So that more light is falling down because I think those trees are a lot further along. They should be able to handle it. That's enough. I'll give you another update, hopefully in a month. Ah. <laughs> 